thank you everyone for making time in your very busy day to come to our first in a series of uh, educational webcasts uh, entitled Creating Knowledge Workers for the Greener Product Marketplace. You all got the invitation, so you all know that today we have three educators from three schools from three different disciplines, um, which is uh, quite compelling and quite uh, unique. Uh, but this story um, is all about jobs in the economy. And it's very simple. Uh, schools that teach students to think about environmental sustainability will attract students and meet industry demand and manufacturers who want to create greener products and compete in the marketplace will recruit students out of these schools, plain and simple. The panelists today have been invited to discuss and demonstrate uh, their success stories using sustainable minds to integrate environmental sustainability into product development education. So uh, the overview of today, um, we'll do a quick introduction of Sustainable Minds as well as our sponsors. Uh, we have with us today uh, Sinan Izrumlu from Babson College, Richard Bronstein from Georgia Institute, and Sri Kondor from St. Louis University, all of whom will introduce themselves uh, when it comes to be their, their turn. Uh, we're going to try and leave at least 15 minutes at the end for Q&A, so um, feel free to type questions into the question box at any point during the presentation and we will take them at the end. Um, any questions that don't get answered during the broadcast, we'll follow up with answers. And yes, slides will be made available. I'd like to talk a little bit about our sponsors, because this is uh, new for Sustainable Minds to get sponsors uh, for our webcast. But uh, with such a unique uh, set of panelists and with such a broad reach to this story, uh, a number of um, customers and partners expressed interest. Um, and so we're really excited to have these three sponsors with us today, um, starting with Spartech, who is a Sustainable Minds customer and has been for several years. Um, Spartech is a leading producer of plastic products, including polymeric compounds, concentrates, custom extruded sheet and roll stock products and packaging technologies for a wide spectrum of customers. They operate facilities in the US, Mexico, and Canada and process more than a billion pounds of plastic resins, alloys, and color specialty compounds. In the time that we've been working with Spartech, um, we have witnessed as they have continued to go down the path of developing and driving sustainable product development and really making it uh, something front and center that they compete with in the marketplace uh, to acquire customers. And so we are learning along with them and, and thrilled to have them as a customer and a sponsor today. Our next sponsor is Novel. Uh, and Novel is a web-based application integrating technical information with analytical search tools to drive innovation and deliver answers to engineers. Novels with us today because they also are tasked with addressing the challenges associated with expanding requirements for green technologies and industry practices. Uh, Novel is pleased to sponsor programs that educate engineers and others about best practices, particularly those with lasting effects and the greatest relevance for the next generation. And lastly, uh, we would like to welcome SGS to this group, and uh, SGS is the world's leading inspection, verification, testing, and certification company. For decades, SGS has been providing sustainability solutions and services for organizations and companies across the globe. SGS delivers sustainability strategies, implements sustainable design practices, conducts life cycle assessment, and works with companies to reduce the environmental impacts of their operations developing a better working or social environment. So thank you to all three companies for uh, participating uh, in this webcast today. 
So a little bit about Sustainable Minds, um, for those of you not familiar with us, uh, we came to market a little over two years ago. Uh, the company is four years old. And we actually were the very first uh, company in the engineering software space focused on environmental sustainability. And because of that entrance and because of the influence we've been able to have, some of the companies that you're very familiar with have also started to add environmental sustainability technology to their solutions, which is great for everybody. Uh, our mission as a company is to operationalize environmental performance into mainstream product development and manufacturing through bringing together two big ideas, uh, combining eco-design, thinking differently with life cycle assessment, metrics and measurement. So when you think differently and you really measure, you're going to get truly greener products. And it's in the thinking differently part where innovation really happens. And that's why we named the company Sustainable Minds. It's all about getting people to think differently first. And that's what you're going to learn about today, how these educators are teaching their students to think differently first. We have customers uh, both in manufacturing, education, and uh, product consultancies. But again, we're here today to talk about our educational customers. And we've really been um, amazed uh, by the viral adoption of sustainable minds in colleges and universities uh, all around the world. Um, and this is just an example of some of the educational customers that we have, again, spanning the disciplines of uh, business, engineering, design, and environmental studies. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Sinan Erzurumlu from Babson College, and he's going to tell you about Babson himself and the course that he's teaching and how he's using Sustainable Minds. So Sinan, take it away. Thank you, Terry. Um, thanks for everyone being here. Um, and, um, you know, and from a nice, wonderful afternoon from Boston, um, today I would like to talk a little bit about how I use Sustainable Minds uh, in my course teaching and um, how did I get started and I'm, where I'm going to be heading with this. Uh, so, um, oops, if we could, all right. Oh, all right, yeah, okay. Uh, so a little bit of background about myself. Um, I've received my PhD at the University of Texas at Austin uh, in supply chain management, in operations uh, management. Um, I worked at Center for Space Research as a design engineer and also worked at Dell Compu Computers um, as an operations manager. Uh, my expertise and research interests uh, have mostly been on technology management, supply chain management, and bringing sustainability and entrepreneurship. And if you, if you I ask myself, like, why I have been involved with sustainability, actually it lies in the core idea of um, operations management, which is basically bringing process thinking in a multi-stakeholder environment. Um, to improve the efficiency of systems. Um, but if you look into the systems that we are dealing in the past decade, we are seeing that in supply chains that goods no longer follow, follow flow in one direction, or the products that we design, that we manufacture and use, um, their life is extending beyond end of life, and uh, more and more customers and uh, manufacturers are being more concerned about what happens with their product when they go beyond the end of life. Um, and maybe I should put the end of life in a quotation mark here. Um, also, there is a new um, breed of, uh, breed of um, thinkers coming out of business schools who would like to approach business issues both from the economic and social value generation perspective. So what does this mean? Um, we obviously want to do things the, the same way we used to do them. Uh, we need a new platform for innovations, and I believe that environmental performance, uh, bringing environmental performance into business decision making uh, plays a very important role here. Um, Babson is also, as a college, has this culture uh, very well uh, embedded, like we are committed to sustainability, and not necessarily with our courses or our curriculum, but also um, our president has signed the American College and University President Climate Commitment, uh, which like, you know, try to improve uh, campus' uh, carbon footprint and become one of the thought leaders and developers in the sustainability field. And we have a program that's uh, shortly called Fierce, which looks into 
triple bottom line thinking in different ways. And a couple of other programs, we started the sustainability concentration and a three college program with the Alden College of Engineering and Wellesley uh, College here at uh, Wellesley. And a couple of other initiatives uh, that we are developing around, which we would like to summarize as this is our entrepreneurial thought and action. Uh, we want people to take entrepreneur entrepreneurship in different directions, and we want to educate entrepreneurs of all kinds, which means um, you would like to think differently, more innovatively. Uh, so our students come into classes asking for us, like, you know, what would be the next platform um, for their um, education? What should be new um, ideas that they should learn? Uh, that What should be new platforms that they would generate their ideas from? Uh, my course is uh, business and the environment uh, has junior and senior students um, who would like to learn more about sustainability, but also would like to see how they can apply sustainability to businesses. And actually, I try to set two goals in my class. Uh, one is students coming into classroom, understand sustainability and what it means for their lives and their value system and their behaviors and try to think about how they, uh, how they could make changes, how they could become the change makers in their own personal lives. But at the same time, they try to understand how systems are interrelated and how they can apply these concepts of sustainability um, by engaging um, like in the challenges and solutions uh, in a different and holistic context. So um, I use sustainable minds in different levels in my course. Uh, obviously, for business decision making, it's a wonderful tool to implement. But I would like to talk about a more fun project that I'm doing in the classroom, uh, which goes along with my, let, let me call like you know, first goal, like you know, reminding students that they are actually the creators of the problems on one hand, but they would be, they could also become the, the per people who would solve these pro problems and issues that we have created. So we have a very simple project. Um, each participant gets to choose six items of clothing and pledge to wear only these six items for um, six, two weeks. Um, you might have heard of this experiment. Actually, this goes beyond four weeks, uh, and I sometimes challenge the class like if they would like to do it longer. Uh, but two weeks, like you know, works great for uh, students, and they g get the point of um, the impact, uh, environmental impact of six items in their life. And here, Sustainable Minds plays a great role um, that students like can easily log on to the software and start like uh, inputting their clothing choices into the software and trying to see where their environmental impact has been the worst and then look for lifestyle changes uh, and even um, business changes in the system. So in the, with this project, I'm trying to achieve two things, which is um, we buy clothes and we use them so quickly and we uh, discard them very easily. Um, it puts us on the drive. It puts the students and anyone, any one of us who participates in this, on the in the driver's seat, understand, trying to understand what am I doing with this consumerism that I'm um, that I've been a part of. And then students try to come up with some uh, business, you know, innovative business ideas where they can uh, improve the environmental impact by at least 25 percent. And uh, all these computations are done by Sustainable Minds. Um, here's this uh, screenshot from one of the projects um, that was submitted this year. The student here um, picked a, a pair of jeans and a purple v-neck. And very neatly, they went through the uh, problem uh, to understand the environmental impact of every single clothing item they picked. And uh, Sustainable Minds both gives them the idea of like where the greatest impact has been. And at the same time, right here, is it showing? Like the cotton was the worst, and it caused ecotoxicity. And manufacturing life cycle needs more improvement. At this point, students can come up with solutions to the manufacturing. So rather than you know beating around the bush, they understand where the core problem is, and they start to come up with some eco-design strategies here, such as should they use low-impact materials, optimize manufacturing, lifetime or end of life of their product. And I think uh, this is like more, um, I would say, tangible learning. But what I'm really trying to get students to rethink consumerism, redefine value, and think holistically when they are approaching um, both, uh, a, you know, a life-changing solution. So a few things uh, here: a student could take and uh, control the um, the, the uh, different items that they are using, and also understand like what could be the performance improvement uh, from a reference point they have put. Um, the software is also very fascinating and easy for uh, me to adjust where students have made changes uh, in their system. Like they are here, the students are using cotton, it did yarn production, and so they could pick down the process steps and the material they have used, 
which would give them the carbon dioxide equivalent in kilogram emissions. And similarly, they could apply transportation or other materials. And uh, here, for, for a different clothing item, they have used it. Or they could, have, they could do this for all, also for end-of-life uh, choices that they would make. So all of this is great, but I would like to show you one level of depth. Like when student comes to, for example, water usage, they also realize that there are different ways of using water in the in their system. And the the software gives them a nice description of how they calculate these uh, numbers, like what has been the benchmark, like the formula is H2O, like which company has developed this. So it gives a legitimate uh, calculation uh, for students who could use this like for simple or more complicated projects uh, like um, here is my, what the students uh, eventually build up their ecosystem of six floating items with different environmental impact as the suggestion was in this case the student tried to come up with some solutions for uh, manufacturing and with that what they could do they could improve the system uh, as you see the numbers here they are like coming up from carbon dioxide emissions are easily decreasing. This way students could try different things like come up with fascinating and innovative ideas like you know I let them go wild about this but I talk to, I tell them that well two things one it has to be adaptable it has to be usable and three you have to prove me that you're making an environment you're reducing the environmental impact and software here I think does a great job of uh, communicating this. Again back to the first slide picture I've shown you it's as much you you can just show as much detail as you want, but at the same time you can just like reduce the greatest impacts and just like you know make a more uh, focused analysis uh, from this point on. Um, when I look at the classroom and when I talk with students, that uh, most of our students just don't want to come to classroom, take notes, understand sustainability, and go. Our students are demanding more and more. I want to learn, but I want to live and experience it as much as I want. I want to have a better feeling for how I can contribute to environment, how I contribute to environmental issues, and how I can act to reduce this, uh, uh, the, my uh, personal impact uh, on the environment. So with this, um, with this project, actually, we are, I think, I'm trying to achieve both that, but at the same time, getting students feeling more confident dealing with analysis, even for a simple item like picking your clothes, and then they can understand, appreciate the role of different assumptions they need to make. And at, at the same time, like you need to bring some transparency into your analysis. Um, on, a, on a larger scale, this is a great opportunity uh, using the software, uh, like applying life cycle analysis and also design thinking uh, into students' approach for uh, broader um, business solutions that they could generate from this analysis, they, they, this experiment they have been through. Um, I believe for educators, like uh, for myself, this has been a very convenient program to use. And although, like, if you're coming from engineering schools, some software programs can take a while to teach. Like, you have to give assignments, move from you know phase A to phase B. But sustainable minds is very simple. Um, I just do a little uh, project uh, before I give this major project uh, to students uh, to get them comfortable with the software, which doesn't take too much time. And then I can come back throughout the semester and have students apply life cycle analysis uh, using sustainable minds. It complements the discussions great in a great way. And um, it also like uh, we just don't want the class to be qualitative. We want our students to make more um, quantitative analysis, analytical thinking into their business decision making. This gives credibility to our analysis and recommendations. So students can seek alternatives easily using the software. And at the same time, they could they are generating some uh, tangible results that they can share with uh, with others. Um, so when I look into um, how can can how sustainable minds is um, preparing students for industry, um, I believe that this approach of life cycle thinking, um, like manufacturers like taking more responsibility of products they are producing, and customers are more becoming more concerned about how how they buy how they use products bringing environment and social justice to the center of uh, business model innovations require a different approach or from uh, future leaders and managers. Uh, in the multi-stakeholder em environment, um, we would require a tool easy to understand and share by all. And I can see that um, by uh, bringing students' life cycle and thinking, like bringing uh, life cycle analysis into business decision making, I'm seeing the impacts on their approach to innovation, 
manufacturing, supply chain, or end of life uh, effects of business and practices and decisions. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be honest, like I don't see um, business practitioners that excited about it yet, but I know they're going to come there. So what I believe is actually um, we as academics like have to be the thought leaders, uh, bringing our students these new perspectives like life cycle thinking, which I believe that they would launch ideas for environment for profits and environment for social value. And um, But I have to uh, add this as well, in, in this class students also use this for uh, more, uh, you know, there's also an economic component, like economic cost analysis they do with the environmental analysis, and then combine those two for decision-making purposes. Um, I believe that the new breed of engineers and managers um, are looking into global social and environmental issues differently. They think with new mental models, but um, there are going to be some solutions that we are going to make in the long, shot, long uh, term, such as, you know, change our lightning systems, um, I, I don't know, like, you know, to use insulation in our window solutions. Like, you could come up with lots of suggestions like this, but there are broader suggestions such as changing consumers' interaction with your products. Do they really need to own the product? Can you use servicizing in your product where you sell services instead of uh, products themselves? As you see, this is a very innovative area. We are changing the platform of innovation for students, and uh, I think that we are this way nurturing uh, entrepreneurs of all kinds uh, with our um, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial thought and action approach to uh, different ways of um, business pre, uh, pre issues. Um, and I think I would leave it at that. So. Thank you so much, uh, Sam. That was fantastic. Um, I think you really set up uh, both Richard and Sri for the stories that they're going to tell. Uh, and I think we'll see how this uh, ultimately all, all weaves together. So, Richard, go ahead. Um, thanks, Terry. And uh, first of all, thanks, uh, everyone, for tuning in and, and letting us uh, share our story at George Tech, or in particular, uh, I'd like to talk about what we're doing in the, the uh, industrial design school at George Tech. There's a lot of other work going on at George Tech that I'm really not here to discuss. So I'm going to focus on the one particular class uh, that, that we're, we're dealing with there. As far as uh, some of my background, uh, I've been at Georgia Tech now for well over 15 years uh, as part of the adjunct faculty. Uh, I'm also responsible uh, in my other non-academic life for product development at YKKAP. Now, yes, for those in the audience who may be familiar with the name YKK, yes, we are the zipper company, but we also do architectural products, and uh, that's, that's where my focus is. And what's of interest in particular, at least germane to this discussion, is that both uh, from an academic point of view and uh, from my other other side of my professional life. Sustainability is really at the heart of things because from uh, YKKAP, uh, clearly, you know, our mission is to make sure that we're supporting the huge, um, the huge, uh, you know, problems that the architectural community is facing in order to, to address sustainability. And of course, from academia and industrial design in particular, uh, we need to make sure that we are, you know, preparing students to understand uh, environmental considerations from the core of the design process. Uh, okay, about Georgia Tech, um, or at least uh, our program. Uh, it's both undergraduate and, and graduate programs, and, and in general, we're very similar to other universities. Uh, we really encourage our students to take full advantage of Georgia Tech because there's a lot going on. Uh, and certainly in terms of collaboration and cross-disciplinary types of educational opportunities, it's, it's a wonderful place for them to explore many areas, including, of course, sustainability. And occasionally we get the opportunity of working with industry in some sort of sponsored uh, project that we integrate into, the, into some of the core assignments uh, in our program. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the course in particular. This is a course that's been in development for 10 plus years. It continues to evolve. Um, it, is, it is predominantly a lecture class. Uh, it's for third year students and occasionally we have graduate students as well. And um, they've already had some, some degree of understanding of, of the design process. They've been, of course, implementing design methods for, for, for a year or so now. And uh, one of the first things is we, ha we need to explain to our students is that sustainability has to come from the middle of that design process, from, from that meaning from the very beginning, along with 
the other classic drivers in the process that really drive every every product you know development uh, you know uh, solution. So if if you put sustainability uh, toward the end, you're not going to get anything except some sort of band-aid approach. So they need to understand that it needs to be holistic in nature. Um, and the other part is as they're looking at you know product development again you know so often happens that you know the the misconceptions of what what sustainability is which of course is one of the first things that we address as some sort of very fundamental definitions but fully recognizing that it has to occur throughout the life cycle of the product not something at one phase which is often part of what happens in marketing where some uh, company finds some single attribute that they can then market around and our students very quickly recognize that in order to really do a good job of designing products they're going to have to integrate uh, sustainable concepts throughout uh, the entire process from raw, raw material extraction all the way through end of life you know considerations so so where do we start we, we don't start really with uh, design assignments and exercises we, we start with you know, supplying our students with a good cross-section of reading material that they continue to do throughout the entire semester. And then we're dealing with, you know, issues of ethics and governance and consumption and other related topics and uh, from a number of different types of, of authors, including some that don't necessarily buy into all of the concerns that are a focus of this class. So we, we try to, to tackle some of the issues head on. Uh, we don't give one side of the story and at the end of the process we feel like we're giving students really an honest uh, you know and, and a very open view of, of the issues that they're going to have to address both at school of course and then as soon as they, they get out of school and enter the quote-unquote professional world. That's where we start but we kind of weave uh, into the entire process this idea of, of the design tools and design methods and as you can see from this, this simple pictorial, we'll have design methods on both sides, ideation tools and then evaluation tools. And of course, sustainable minds happens, you know, in that evaluation side. But since it's an iterative process, you know, you continue to work both ideation and evaluation throughout the process until you have, you know, some sort of formidable type of solution or solutions. Um, let me explain the one major assignment that one runs throughout the, the, the program and it kind of gives you a sort of a glimpse into how we handle the, the, the entire design process. At the very beginning of the semester we give uh, teams uh, some sort of handheld household device uh, that we want them to do a full analysis on. They start by doing um, a disassembly and they, they analyze that disassembly and, and you know draft all the steps that are, that are used, the tools that are required and then of course they create a bill of materials. And then throughout the semester, we, we have lecture topics on any number of, you know, design methods, things like, you know, designing for disassembly, design for recycling, dematerialization. We look at biomimicry um, and, and so on and so forth. And we key uh, assignments around one of these specific design methods that could help drive, um, you know, innovation. And so what you're looking at are really just snapshots, and I'm just going to quickly rifle through some of the images, the types of thumbnail sketches that our students are doing that help them realize how they can integrate these concepts into the conceptualization of, you know, new product ideas. Somewhere towards, you know, probably two-thirds of the way through this semester, we introduce uh, life cycle assessment methodology. And in particular, we, we introduce sustainable minds. Uh, and we, we give them a very simple assignment, as you see pictured here, and we ask them to go ahead and do an analysis of it. And then we ask them also then to come up with some new ideas uh, that, that they can then compare looking at a number of issues, but of course looking at the scoring that takes place during the life cycle assessment. And that's really just a way to introduce them back into how to use a particular, uh, you know, LCA tool that they, they will then start applying to their final assignment. And so what you're looking at here in this picture is each team then goes back as a team and starts saying, okay, how can we take all the things that we've learned throughout the semester, the things that we've read about, the various design methods, 
and using life cycle assessment start to look at new concepts um, that will help drive some innovative solution. And so they go back, they take their bill of materials, they do an assessment from an LCA perspective using sustainable minds to get their baseline. And then they start developing new concepts around their original product that they can figure out ways that they integrate, not just you know, uh, using LCA as the only driver, but the design methods, you know, whether they're designing for recycling or disassembly or trying to dematerialize or find some sort of biologically you know, inspired solution, they're, they're coming up and then assessing these various concepts in such a way that they come up with what they believe to be a very you know, uh, reasonable and, and uh, uh, defensible design solution. And you're just looking at one, one group of students, how they went through the process, they did the assessments, and they eventually conclude that the solution that they, they want is uh, the one I'm picturing here, uh, but any number of ones could have been shown. All right, so what are, the, what are students learning? Well, obviously, you know, looking at, at, at all these processes and, and becoming much more familiar with uh, the writings, and, you know, that are, that are out there, they're starting to understand how to look, look at the design process much more holistically, number one. And then they, are, of course, are integrating sustainability throughout the process. Um, it's also then, you know, equipping them, familiarizing them with tools, and, and some of the other classic educational purposes of team building. For our perspective as educators, we're really seeing firsthand how students are using these tools creatively, which oftentimes is different than we have expected. So it's a wonderful educational experience for us in, in the educational end of things. Um, and we're also then reinforcing that these concepts do bear fruit, and it's very clear to see definable solutions at the end of the process. And as I like to say in the third bullet there, we help this dispel some of the myths surrounding that whole single attribute, you know, problem that occurs so often in industry. Um, and, you know, what, what are the trends that are happening in industry? Well, industry, as I say right away, is no longer the training grounds. We're expecting students to come out of school prepared to sort of get right into the design profession, and that means that they have to be familiar with the process and some of the tools that go along with it. Uh, and uh, LCA is clearly one of those tools. Understanding how to use streamlined LCAs is even more effective because we can't expect design concepts to come from full-blown LCAs. And then Sustainable Minds really becomes an, inc an incredibly useful tool because um, it's very easy to use. It's very quick. It's, it's, um, it does it does sort of respond to the nature of a designer. So from our point of view, you know, it's, it's visually and aesthetically very pleasing, and it's uh, quite intuitive. And since it's on the internet, you can also store all that information and build upon on models that you've already started. And it's most importantly, very rapid turnaround ideas, you know, so you can come up with concepts in a very short amount of time. Um, and so bottom line for us is, We've now equipped students with, with uh, ideas of what sustainability is. We've reinforced it, by the way, in other classes. They see how it works, and now they're applying specific tools, and in particular, sustainable minds, so that they can see firsthand that there is concrete ways of being able to assess all of these very abstract concepts. And on that note, I probably would like to turn it over to our next presenter and just really thank Terry for this opportunity. Thank you, Richard. That was fantastic. And uh, you can tell it was the uh, design portion of the program as we had some beautiful renderings and, and representations of ideas. Um, I think what's also important, and you've heard from Sinan and, and then Richard, and you'll also hear from Sri, is that uh, Sustainable Minds was designed for any type of user whether they're studying business, design, or engineering, uh, to be able to take life cycle thinking and a holistic approach to the products that they're developing and be able to have some quantified uh, information with which to make decisions. And so this is uh, just a fantastic um, series of stories about different types of students uh, successfully uh, integrating a very new way of thinking in a technical field of science into 
uh, their everyday practices. So with that, Sri, I'm going to ask you to take it forward. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining. Thank you, Terry, for organizing this. My name is Sri, Sri Kandru. I'm um, a Keen Fellow. Keen stands for Kern Entrepreneurship Education Network. We're a group of 24 schools trying to promote entrepreneurial mindset. And St. Louis University is one of the uh, Keen schools. The others include Boston University, Worcester Polytechnic, and schools all across the US. All our private schools are uh, trying to incorporate entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, I teach sustainability, product design type courses. I also teach entrepreneurship. I see a very strong link between sustainability and entrepreneurship. Uh, I was co-inventor for a hubless wind turbine. Uh, it's being currently commercialized. To tell you a little bit about our school, it was founded in 1927. Uh, by Parks. So it's called Parks College. We have FAA certificate number one to issue pilot license. We emerge as a leader in aerospace, biomedical, computer, electrical, mechanical engineering disciplines. We have integrated sustainability in all these courses and sustainability is centerpiece and one of the focus areas of Parks College. We also started a center for sustainability a couple of years ago with a $5 million grant from Alberishi Foundation. Uh, we uh, created Master of Sustainability program. It's one of its type. Uh, we get totally interdisciplinary students from business, public policy, engineering, all. Uh, they have customized their own course schedule. So it's a pretty interesting set of students we get to meet. Today what I want to do is kind of give you an overview of two projects. I have a complete slide deck for people who are interested in going through the details. I'll skip several slides, but I want to give you an overview. The first course we introduce sustainability is a 200 level course, which is a sophomore course. It's called Introduction to Design and Manufacturing, and we use this for six weeks. Uh, most of our teams are three students. Uh, we may have eight teams. We give very nominal budget, $20 for them, to kind of come up with a design. The project we post for them is essentially we ask them to design a solar oven for a developing country. So they go through four distinct steps. First, they have to identify target, not target, a target company, and a nonprofit. So they look at the economic forum reports and they kind of dig at different countries. They kind of figure out where they want to implement this solar cooker. And they also look at who their target customers are. And they also look at a nonprofit organization that would help them to deploy these solar cookers in that region. Once they identify the nonprofit and the country, then they spend significant amount of time understanding their culture. What are their cooking habits? They may visit a local restaurant. Uh, they learn about their social values. Finally, uh, these social values oftentimes help them to decide what type of a cooker they need, whether a group cooker or somebody individual, things like that. Then they actually go about uh, coming up with different concepts actually building the solar cooker and testing it. Once they test the cooker, they actually figure out two things. One is they figure out what the business model is going to be. What would be the price for the customer, cost, burn rate, break-even analysis, all those details. They, do. they also learn to do environmental footprint. What's the impact? So at this point, they use sustainable minds. They probably you said the last week, the way I describe this, it's extremely linear process. At sophomore stage, all we want them to be exposed through all the facets 
we're looking at the customers, we're looking at the societal values, at the environmental piece, we're looking at the economic piece. And once they have all these concepts together, they can build from these concepts in subsequent four courses. So I'll skip a few slides which I described. And in terms of student outcomes, what did they do? One, uh, on the left side you would see a CAD picture of the solar cooker. So they actually have to do a CAD model. Then they have to build the prototype. On the right side at the bottom you see a picture of the solar cooker, how it looks like. They have to do testing. It tells you how fast it's doing. They do two tests. One test in a, a hot day, one is a cold day. Unfortunately, this project happens uh, in the spring semester, in the first half of the spring semester. So normally we have cold days here in St. Louis. So the temperature really outside is not ideal. So they do two types, really cold day and hot. And they also use sustainable mines to evaluate what the footprint is. Here is a, a student reflection. You can read, our eyes have not only opened to many issues in the world that engineers must solve, but also team thought process has changed most significantly to a sustainable mindset. So we emphasize the idea of a mindset significantly in our courses. To compare and contrast, I take you to the senior level, uh, 470-570 course, which is innovation, creativity, and sustainability. Again, same amount, 25% of the grade. Here, we do team projects, same three, and the budget is also exactly the same. Okay, We com combine synthesis and evaluation very closely. So we bring innovation tools like trimming technique, by association, we bring Debono's six hats, all of these creative techniques, tightly integrated with LCA, sustainable minds, and it really works well. Because it's a mindset, we provide them these creative tools and then they think about how do I implement this and sustainable minds helps them to evaluate number of concepts and figure out which one is better one to follow. So the project you have seen is eco-friendly toaster, the same as Georgia Tech project. The way we do it is slightly different, the implementation. So the first thing is we uh, ask them to get a toaster, disassemble, find out the environmental impact. So this part is essentially doing a benchmark and saying this is a current environmental footprint of a toaster that's $8 or $9. The second step is they actually spend time looking at customer needs. They do ethnographic study. They look, go to different people's houses, see what kind of toasters they use, what kind of problems. They go to Amazon.com, look at all the problems people have with toasters. So they do ethnographic study. Then they use Edward Dibbon's uh, six hats technique to actually generate a number of ideas. Here is where sustainable minds come to a real good value. They can evaluate and figure out which one is much more sustainable or other. So they can do trade-off studies in terms of performance and sustainability, things like that. Then they create, create a model of this toaster, they create a box, which is the outside, and they decorate it, they display it as if it's going to be displayed in a supermarket, so customers see what are the features, what are the sustainability impact, things like that. They pitch the idea, they kind of sit back and say what they learn. So here are a few things you will see. One is a CAD model of the sustainable um, their design. At the bottom they see a model that they built. This is all built from the toaster they disassembled and they also found environmental footprint using the sustainable mine software. They also compare several toasters. Here is a comparison. The comparison is what is critical with sustainable mines. A quick easy thing which helps us to determine which toaster is good. In terms of uh, key learning outcomes for our students, they understand the role of synthesis in sustainability. LCA, Sustainable Minds, tell you what the impact is. 
but we have to tie it very tightly with creativity techniques for them to actually uh, change their mindset. So the creativity synthesis, creative synthesis is one part. Uh, the value of coming up with good ideas. So they learn that one or two ideas don't solve. Reducing the footprint by 10%, 20% doesn't solve the problem. They have to make significant change. Um, they learn uh, the value of uh, green product development process. They go through it a number of times during their semester. So all in all, to end, I recommend sustainability tools as a great uh, evaluation tool to assess which product is greener than the other very quickly at a conceptual design phase. Thank you very much. Thanks, Terry. Well, thank you, Sri. Um, all three of the presentations um, were so well told and um, but have a lot of commonality. Um, bringing it back full circle, uh, the story is about jobs in the economy. It's about educating people to think differently, to be innovative, to be able to go out into the marketplace, uh, have skills that are relevant in today's market, and get jobs at companies that are really doing innovative, important uh, things in the marketplace uh, to change the way the way we consume. So this is really kicking off um, a, a focused effort here at Sustainable Minds to uh, enable education to start to integrate across disciplines um, by having these webcasts and more importantly creating a, a database of curriculum uh, that we will be uh, collecting from the educators who are currently using Sustainable Minds and making it available to educators who are starting to use Sustainable Minds uh, in, their, in their classes. Uh, I was fortunate uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, Sri invited me to a Keen workshop uh, where there were 40 engineering faculty who had come to learn new entrepreneurial skills to integrate into their uh, engineering curriculum. And my big takeaway from that workshop was educators are busy just like everybody else. They just want to know how to teach it. And that is going to be our goal for the rest of the year is to really put together a comprehensive set of curriculum in business design and engineering that we will make freely available to schools and educators uh, as they integrate sustainable minds, not just at the class level, but at the department level, at the school level, and even at the uh, university or school uh, site level. And for those of you who are on the webcast today who are already using sustainable minds, I welcome you to uh, reach out to us. We will be reaching out to you uh, to see about not only sharing uh, the curriculum that you've developed, but the stories that you've developed as well. We will be having two more webcasts in this series with a slightly different focus for each one uh, in terms of uh, the educators participating. And uh, we'll let you know when those are going to be. They'll be in the next few months, and we'll let you know who will be participating. Um, let's move into the Q&A section of the um, discussion. And uh, as we do that, I just want to uh, leave this up. Again, our educational programs, uh, schools can purchase packages for classes at the department level, a school or site subscription. Uh, curriculum will be available. We do training and support. Uh, we're available to deliver support throughout the semester or throughout the year. We'll train you, the faculty, or train groups of faculty. Additionally, the support includes um, our custom data development. And we've seen increasingly, as students are thinking more innovatively, they want to try new materials and new processes and explore new ways of working. And because, again, Sustainable Minds is a 
cloud-based application, we can add that data uh, and add those processes on demand so that students and, and classes can uh, work in a way that they would work in industry. Uh, feel free to reach out to us for webcasts to take us into your organization to help get your faculty on the same page. And for those of you who are visiting us from industry on this webcast, we'll want to let you know about how to get started in your company uh, operationalizing uh, greener product innovation. So with that, I'm going to start the questions, uh, and any of the three of you can, can take this one. Each of you are teaching in your respective uh, disciplines, and currently your classes are made up of uh, people in that program. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, in each of your schools, uh, you can imagine uh, how interdisciplinary projects or programs could be uh, initiated or run using Sustainable Minds as, as an enabler, and, and how that could happen? I mean, I can. I think I can say a few things about this. Um, uh, we have a product design and development class uh, to, taught by a colleague of mine, and that's a wonderful class. That's a three is with Rhode Island School of Design and Babson College uh, collaborate on this together, and students are basically walk through the PD uh, product development uh, process um, from you know um, concept development uh, to. Um, to concept selection, uh, prototyping, pilot testing, and then ramp up. Um, so they just bring up all. They one semester they walk through all steps of PD design, and I know that like you know part of that course like you know that it, this this collaboration between uh, two colleges have worked very well, and using sustainable uh, minds uh, could be a good way of uh, bringing students uh, most more like sustainable thinking into their PD uh, class. Um, we also do a three college certificate program at Babson, which is, as I mentioned uh, briefly, um, between All in College of Engineering, Babson College, and Wellesley, where students uh, look into um, designing sustainable, um, I would say, systems because the problems there could not necessarily mean a product, but it could also mean a social uh, solution. And uh, there, like you know, we could see like you know more and more applications of a tool. A very hands-on, very practical tool being very helpful, and I could see a sustainable minds being very useful in these kind of situations. At St. Louis University, our sustainability center courses are all interdisciplinary. Um, sustainability minds brings, um, it's not really technical in terms of uh, heavily engineering component, differential equations, things like that. It makes the business students and other students feel much more comfortable about using the software. Innovation, creativity, sustainability course also is open to all students in the uh, St. Louis University, which include business, arts and sciences, public policy, different types. So you can integrate pretty easily into the courses. And uh, this is Richard, if I could add. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the class that we're, we're teaching in the uh, School of Industrial Design really helps develop the fundamentals of, of sustainability and, and how it could practi practically be used in the design process. But there's no doubt that collaboration is the only way to, uh, you know, uh, work, you know, the, the concepts forward and, and, and teach students, you know, how to use it. And we, we are much more effective in our graduate program in being able to do that. So I kind of look at our undergraduate class as, as a way of, you know, making sure they have a, a good basic understanding. But, but in, in the graduate program, they really have a chance to reach out across schools, at both informally as indiv individual students modeling their own programs, but also formally as, as efforts made by the program to combine various colleges on the graduate level in order to, you know, develop, you know, truly creative solutions. And what's nice about Sustainable Minds is it, is it now has an opportunity to quantify the outcomes in such a way that, that every part of the uh, collaboration can concretely see the effects of the, the re redesign or design efforts that they're making. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. Um, I know that from 
uh, working with each of you and some of our other uh, educational programs, uh, there has been significant uh, advancement in interdisciplinary uh, projects um, because that's what industry is demanding. I'd be curious, uh, and you know, they they teach you never to, in an interview never to ask a question you don't know the answer to, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, have any of you seen, as a result of a student going through a course such as your own and being taught to think differently, uh, have you seen evidence of them taking this thinking into other classes or uh, influencing other students or even changing their mind about uh, the track that they're on in their, in their, uh, in their education? Uh, if I could start, it's Richard. Um, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, keep in mind, we've been doing this class for 10 years, so I have to be very honest. 10 years ago, the reading assignments were much different than they were today because I was spending a good deal of my time trying to develop that new mindset to get, get students to open up to the, op the idea that we needed to do something. Um, so, so I, and then over the, over the course of this time, the reading assignments have changed because more and more students have so, sort of embraced the idea. But nonetheless, there's always a big portion of, of student, the student body who kind of just treat this as, uh, oh, it's a class, I've got to deal with it, and so on. But, we, but I've noticed over the course of the semester, typically, you know, um, that, that through their reading and through hands-on experience, they do see and understand the differences. And I've gotten many emails over the years uh, where I've had uh, stories told to me by students, former students, where they've actually gone into industry and have made change. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's so gratifying, obviously, when that, when that happens. And if it happened just once or twice, it would have been wonderful. But I can assure you, it's happened dozens of times. So I, I like to think that, that these kinds of tools and, and, and class classroom activities are making a difference uh, for the better. Yeah, I can imagine that, I mean, I can imagine that's extremely gratifying for you in the same way that the three of you doing this webcast is very gratifying for us here at Sustainable Minds. Um, Sri or, or Sinan, do you have anything you'd like to share? I'll give you another example. I have one um, student who went to Hasman, which is part of Ingersoll Ryan, and he changed their meat case design so that it's 40 percent much more greener than before and wow. he has three or four patents he graduated two years ago and I have two students currently graduating both of them developing two different products one is a trash can which is much more sustainable another one is a refillable marker pens the marker pens once they use it they trash uh, faculty all of us do that all the time so this one would it. So both these cases, I see the students getting the mindset and actually taking it one step further. That's, That's my fantastic. Answer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm relatively. I've been relatively teaching this like I think the past three years now. This course, but even in that time, um, like I don't need to convince students about the environmental impact of uh, wrong business mo models. Um, so students are coming to class now, they don't want to discuss this, they want to learn, okay, what can I do about this? Um, well, in my short tenure, I have seen one student who has taken his class project, um, which was about using vermicomposting, using um, worms into uh, composting um, waste, and to cause us collecting waste, and he was supposed to collect waste and then turn this into um, um, to composting material that he could sell to farms, and he did start this project. I mean, he carried on with this project after after his class, and he launched his company after finishing the school. Um, but as I'm saying, like students are coming to class, like rather than seeing, um, like you know, I want to learn about sustainability. There's that group as well. It's more now. I'm seeing more students like, you know, I want to know like what opportunities are there. Like I really believe in this, and I really think that we could make a change on this. I'm seeing that crowd, so that's why it's uh, it's more exciting to see how sustainability is taking off. Well. With that, we are at the top of our um, time, and a couple of questions have come in that I think um, could be fairly simple and, and quick to answer. Uh, one was about um, 
the simplicity and ease of use of, of sustainable mines. Um, and the question is, realistically, what's the learning curve? Uh, how much class time is required to get students using it uh, uh, to an adequate level? And one thing I didn't add um, is that there's quite an extensive learning center in sustainable mines right. teaching people uh, how to do effective environmental impact assessment and scenario development. Um, so students can learn on their own, um, and practitioners can also uh, learn on their own. But quickly, if any of you would like to weigh in on how much time uh, you've seen uh, required to get students uh, at a reasonably competent level. We do one uh, whole lecture. We do please, one whole lecture, uh, which is one hour fifteen minutes on sustainable multi mines in their sophomore year. After that, they pick it up and run. That's yeah. the only lecture they get. Yeah. So that, that's uh, pretty much the same. So go, Richard, please. Yeah. Oh no. no all I was going to say is we we have a class where we talk about LCA in general. We we explain what the terminology is that goes along with LCA in general, not even your product per se, and then we give zero instruction as to how to use your tool and we have had no problem in having them adopt you know what they've learned immediately to the, the website uh, in your, your particular products. I mean I, I come in my class from thinking from the systems approach, systems thinking and I start talking about life cycle analysis and then I just mention about the Actually, I mostly spent time talking about the basic comp uh, major components of life cycle thinking, like what is the system, you know, which components should be involved, what is the process steps you're going to use. And sustainable minds is very much designed around that idea. So students, the first time they see the software, they pretty much understand what's the logical flow of the software. So I agree with Sri. I do in my class like one example, one homework they do at home. And then following class, we do another example, which is like, um, you know, how can you reduce the shower, like your shower, your sh you take a shower and then how can you reduce the impact of your showering? And that's about it. And then they are with this project. But throughout the course, we do some cases and then we use this. And now there's a classroom project a student group is working on, which they are consulting a startup company here in Boston area. And now they are using sustainable minds to come up with an environmental solution for them. So as I can see, it's, it's really simple to teach and use. I mean, if you can tamper with the software a little bit, and as Terry suggested, there's a wealth of knowledge on the web, uh, on the uh, software's website as well. Thanks, you guys. I, I appreciate the time and effort that you've put in, not just to this presentation, but into the thoughtful way that you've integrated Sustainable Minds into your curriculum. Um, all of you, thank you so much for coming to the webcast today. Those of you interested in getting the slides uh, from the presentation, uh, when you log out of the webcast, there will be some questions. Uh, you can leave us a note uh, to send you the slide deck if you'd like. And uh, we hope to be talking with each and every one of you soon. So thanks again for tuning in, and have a great day. Oh, by the way, this webcast will be available on our website in the next few days along uh, with a summary um, blog post. And so feel free to uh, direct your colleagues and any other collaborators or uh, customers that you have uh, to this event and um, hopefully everyone will benefit. So thanks again and have a great day. <laughs>